everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Watcher of Realms. For today's video, we're going to have a first look at Silas. Let's take a look at this hero that's part of the upcoming 10 times. The finest blood for the most untainted soul. I already did a video on Vierna, taking a look at her, first look, first impressions, checking out her skills, watching the fun videos, and of course checking out our favorite website resource. So that's kind of what we're going to do again today. So let's have a look at Silas the Blind King. So he is a marksman and a piercing damage, which is strong against light armor. So he's anti-air and he has defense penetration self-exiled the elven king blinded himself for the artifact he's a deadly marksman <laughs> all right so i am here by the way guys if you just i, I went on the forerunner server just because i knew the characters were there in game for this her video but you could just click here <laughs> so much easier so let's take a look at his skill well let's see the talent deals 20 percent bonus damage to airborne units for every five instances of attack, the next attack becomes Soul Sniping, which ignores 140% damage, or sorry, deals 140% damage and ignores 50% of the target's defense. He's a built-in savage set I always love. Ignore defense and drop defense. Such a good boss killer skill right there, right? Woo, all right, so physical attack. Basic attack deals 100% damage to one enemy, prioritizing airborne units. His ultimate, when activated, the hero's damage is increased by 60%, and each attack becomes soul sniping and ignores all defense of the target for 15 seconds. Oh yeah, boss killer for sure. I love this kind of stuff. Alright, so... <laughs> it really does make sense that he actually is great for prioritizing airborne units, to pair with Vierna, who actually does reduce damage to airborne units, although she's AoE, she's a mage, but still, they kind of pair perfectly together, and I'm already seeing the synergy between their kits, right? Having both on one team is going to be great. All right, and if a unit within attack range dies, increases damage by 30% for 10 seconds. This effect can be triggered up to one time every 20 seconds. Passive, right? Yeah, passive. And then another passive. After attacking the same target for five seconds, inflicts Eye of Curse upon the target for eight seconds. Eye of Curse will be triggered only one time every 20 seconds. Soul Sniping will deal 50% extra damage to targets with Eye of Curse. Ooh, he sounds like he can smack. And his cost is only 12. Oh my gosh. I mean, a lot of the marksmen are pretty affordable. Um, cost-wise, doesn't surprise me, I guess, but damn! Damn! Alright, and of course we have that bond skill. When, alright, after Vierna is activated in the hero gallery, soul sniping deals 100% extra damage when shadow cloak is in effect. So, both of them have different wordings for this, but it just means, like, her says if you obtain Silas, I think as long, yeah, like this says, once you have them in your gallery. So as long as you pull either one of the characters, they don't need to be a part of the same team. You still have this bond skill, even if they're not part of the roster, not actually deployed. They don't even have to, they just have to be on your account and you still get the bond skills, which is really cool. That's a little bit more clear now after seeing both of these. All right, his hero details here. Let's take a look at his base stats hp um what's the plus 20 and plus 50 from <laughs> oh from my my details because um uh, yeah the pantheon but yeah 1100 11,500 for base hp 37 almost 3800 attack and 871 defense the typical stats otherwise here zero percent extra all right and 13 auto rage regen all right, seems solid, and of course the cost is fine, typical for the marksman, on the, even on the lower side, which is great. 
So awakenings, we have increased attack speed by 100 when Shadow Cloak is in effect. All right, so he might actually be someone you try to get a bit of attack speed on, right? Maybe. Where like Bierna, for example, is one of those who does not benefit from attack speed at all with her basic skill. All right, attack up with the Awakening 2, and Awakening 3, the caster, and one random allied marksman deal 15% extra damage when there are more than two allied marksmen on the battlefield. Rage regen, attack, plus two. And then the Awakening 5, uh, the mark of Eye of Curse will increase physical damage to the target by 15%. He just sounds like he can truly smack, right? Man, so I certainly am very interested in both of these characters. And in another video I'm going to put out the same day today, um, I'm going to talk about when you should really summon, but that's another discussion. But in the meantime, let's have a look there's some really great infographics like I showed from the other, um, yeah, from Bierna. But let's take a look at Silas's here. They're actually in-game now, so that's really cool. I didn't even notice that they were in-game yesterday, but I posted them separately. But let's take a look at Silas. So, a lethal marksman capable of bypassing enemy defense, delivering a devastating single-target damage to units with high defense. Anti-air defense penetration. Anti-air. During his basic attack, Silas prioritizes ta uh, targeting uh, airborne units and deals extra damage to them. Defense penetration. Silas gains the ability to ignore a portion of enemy defense after landing multiple attacks. Furthermore, his ultimate allows him to bypass both defense and magic resistance of his target. Whew. Recommended gear. Silas, with unparalleled single target damage output, is your go to core damage dealer. Equip him with gear that enhances attack and crit damage to unlock his devastating potential. Yeah, a lot of these marksmen really seem to benefit well from actually putting some crit on them. Although early on, like it says, I mean, it suggests annihilating my or fracture early on, Warlord Ages La Wrath late game. But either way, the very early stages, just make sure you're getting solid attack percentage stats. Then try to add the crit rate. Once you get 90 to 100% crit rate, then you try to pump in that crit damage as well. But don't skimp on your attack just to get a little bit of crit in there, especially if you can't get a high level of crit rate because your crit damage isn't going to do much if you can't crit in the first place, right? And you definitely want those ultimates to be critting. You don't want there to be a question in, as far as this goes. But I, yeah, I, so far I love the marksman, like Calypso smacks, she's fun, I had extra attack speed on her too. Um, Setram is just amazing, I am obsessed with him, his range is amazing, and he's probably my favorite character in the game, just to play, he's just so fun to watch. But man, I love him, I love Vierna, I'm so interested in both, I want them all, can I have them all please? All right, Nether Messenger is a perfect choice for heroes like Silas who excel in single target damage. This powerful artifact enhances the wearer's damage with consecutive hits on the same target. Yeah, it sounds like he can really benefit from attack speed and crit rate, but it's hard to judge like if you sacrifice crit rate or crit damage or attack for some attack speed, where is that balance? And that's where the testing really comes in and it's pretty hard to test for that really overall to see the benefit of just pure attack speed but it's definitely something worth trying and it sounds like he can definitely benefit with the consecutive target type um part of his kit and the suggested artifact as well all right battle compatibility guild boss silas's ultimate grants defense penetration perfect for swiftly breaking the guild boss shield Ooh, yeah i need a good defense down or an ignore defense for guild boss yes please ah an artifact material raid. Interesting. I didn't even think of that. So with his defense penetration, Silas effortless effortlessly pierces through magic resistance and defense bosses in these stages. So the artifact material raid, you can probably if you can get away with having one healer, um, and then you have Silas as the other damage dealer on the other square, because there's like two squares you can use for ranged units. 
including healers, he can probably smack really hard, right? And, how, and allow for that defense penetration to improve the speed at which you're taken down the super annoying boss for the artifact raid, which is not a fun one. That is hard. But honestly, I feel like that'd be pretty hard to do overall without with just one healer, unless you have really good gear. I don't know that I could really use him. Um, or if you have Wrath at A5 as a main damage dealer as a fighter, he can really um, self-sustain if he's awake in 5, but I don't think a lot of us have awake in 5 Wraths on our account yet, so that's one of those things that's not very relatable. All right, in Gear 3, conquer Gear 3 with Silas' unrivaled anti-air strength. Let's watch his little video. Silas. Is there no sound? Skill kind of looks boring, bro. Really? Hold on. Fiona's looks so much fancier. Oh, that's just his like basic attack. Or is that actually something that looks so boring? Watcher of realms. Was that showing his ultimate? That was boring. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. That was boring. Okay, okay. Funny, funny enough. And of course, let's go ahead and double check out my Buckets website here with his wonderful tier list. I always have that link in my video description, so be sure to check it out and make sure you're subbed to his YouTube if you're not already. But yeah, let's read this again here. Silas, the highest single target piercing damage dealer in the game. He's a great option for high, reliable damage and can be used in a wide variety of content and especially shines on enemies with high resistances, making him a fantastic boss killer. Love it. Absolutely sounds wonderful, honestly. So as he also rates him pretty high here, um, he actually puts him as an F for artifact material raid, but the game actually suggests using him. That's interesting too. It's just a different perspective. And maybe the reality is once you get to the higher stages of artifact raid, it's too hard to stay alive. <laughs> if you have one of those squares with a damage dealer, cause the boss is going to smack. So maybe that's why he does him as an F, but maybe early on, depending on you're just pushing like stage, like under stage 12, stage 12, I'm stuck on, it's hard. Um, but maybe if you're like under stage 12 and you and you can use one healer and not two to support all the people on the ground trying to, to attack or block for the sake of taking out the damn boss and all those little minions that come up to him and start healing, maybe that's not as possible late game. So I'd, I'd be curious. Let me know in the comments below for any of you experienced Forerunner server players that have played someone like Silas or just anyone, I should say, uh, or just people that have pushed late into the artifact gear raid. The artifact one specifically. Why is why is the game suggesting using him, but my bucket says no? Um, is it is that the case? Is it impossible to stay alive if you don't have two healers for the most part, at least? Or is it just something maybe he just didn't doesn't typically go that strategy and doesn't value having a ranged unit on one of those squares and would prefer having some sort of booster or a da or um double healing can you stay alive in the final stages of artifact raid endgame with one healer is it possible let me know in the comments below but let me know what you guys think of silas he sounds pretty wonderful to me and this was another fun first look at a new character coming out i would love both characters but we're going to talk about that Summoning has some really big debates and some very important factors, so that's for the next video, but that's all for now. I'll see you then. And live on Twitch tonight. I'm going live earlier than normal, guys.